And can we do better? Can we, does, does Racket provide a facility to allow us to do this very common pattern that arises in programming languages, which is dynamic dispatching? And yes, indeed, Racket allows you to do this type-directed dynamic dispatching. How do we do it? We have to import the, the module Racket slash generic. It's known as a generic function and follows into two steps. So first we need to define what is our dynamic function. We actually define, think of, of this name, the first name as kind of like the interface. The idea being and define one or more functions. In this case, I'm only defining one function with bind. I told you before, we are unable to find bind as a generic function but we uh, sorry we are unable to define pure as a generic function that's why we're only finding bind only doing dispatch on that so our, our data type in a way is known as i monad it's the type type to monad type directed monad and i'm just declaring this kind of special name and I can use this special name to say where I want to do dispatching so here in the first parameter what I'm saying is I want to define a function called bin bind so this is the name I'm giving this is my dynamic bind could be any name you choose and then I can use this special name here tie monad to describe the placeholder where I where the defined generics is going to be doing the dynamic dispatching. So I'm going to say that the first parameter is doing dynamic dispatch. Sorry, let me say the in the. Whenever I call dynamic binding, dynamic dispatching is happening on the type of the first parameter. That's what this is saying. And this name could be anything. You can have more arguments. You can have zero arguments. The only thing that matters is if you ever use this name time monad. That means the name you define here. That is going to be your where you're going to be doing you're declaring where you're doing dynamic okay so in this case we only have bind and we're saying that the first argument is where we're dynamic right because that's operation one is where we were doing the check so this is all done basically that conditional with all the types that's all done internally with this single line of code and then what we do is we still need to define a data type per um, Thing we want to register on so you can think of this as a very lightweight form of object oriented and you can imagine iMonad as being the abstract interface and EFF op as being a class that implements a given interface so what you do is you have this special keyword that is called methods and then you say I have a generic method and my generic method is time monad you're giving this time monad and it represents a set of zero or more in this case just one functions that are abstract they are known as method in record basically i'm defining this generic method called time monad sorry that is that comes from the interface time monad then what you ne need to do is you're going to create a there's a list here and you're going to put all the um, you're going to write the definition per name that you define. So in this case, I only define one function, aka one method. So my list is only going to have one definition there, and it's going to have the same name. If then bind, and this is going to be then bind. So let's say you wanted to have two methods. Let's say foo and bar. I would have to define here all any any struct that implements this interface would have to define two. In my case, I only need one, and then that should be enough to to do the whole thing. So now let me change to code. Okay, so I'm importing record generic. I'm declaring my abstract interface called type monad. I'm declaring also one method called dynamic bind, where the dispatching is happening on the first 
parameter. Then what I have here is basically the do notation as in previous examples. But now note that I'm calling the, the um, generic version called bin bind. So I'm not calling a specific one. I'm just using the, the generic function call, the generic function. And then what I do is whenever I create a concrete class, aka a concrete class, so when I define a struct, I can register it with a specific generic, which in this case is time onad. And because I'm defining the generic time onad, I have to define one operation, which is bind. So what that is saying is, what is the bind for EFF op? And what I did here, I just copy pasted the code that was defined for my, our type directed example the previous video. So then pop2 and push2 are exactly in the same way and multiplication is done in the same way. So now I'm using the notation that I, if I call it. Get an error. Okay, so I found the bug. There was just a typo in the I've just fixed it. So if I rerun it, I see what I was expecting, which is a stack which is six. Why? Because I did the same example before. I pushed two and three and then perform application. Still runs as expected. So this kind of gives you a cleaner way to implement dynamic dispatching uh, with language support. Programming language racket, that's how they, they actually. Yeah, that's basically it. So next, what we're going to see is just exceptions.